Hello everyone, my name is Ben, and today I'm going to show you how to set up an equipment with a roll ability. It might seem like a really simple thing to do and implement in core, but there's actually a few little tricks to it that are not intuitive or, or obvious at first that I'm going to show you t today in this tutorial. So here I've created a brand new empty project in core. Uh, it doesn't have anything in it. And so to get the player to do a role uh, or give players the ability to do a role, uh, we need to use what's called a, an ability object. Now, for an ability object to actually work, we have to somehow you know, give that uh, or assign that ability to a player and give it an owner. And the easiest way to do that is to use an equipment, because if you put an ability uh, in or under an equipment, uh, once that equipment is equipped to a player, all the abilities under that equipment will be automatically given to the player that it's equipped to. So first we're just going to go ahead and in the core content we can go down to uh, gameplay objects and find the equipment. Um, you can also just right click in the hierarchy and go to create and find gameplay object and here you'll find equipment. Now let's go ahead and name this equipment object just roll equipment and we don't need a pickup trigger in this case so we'll go ahead and delete that. So now we have this equipment and we can add an, an ability to it. So we can right click on this and go down to create and create a gameplay object and find ability. And we can just name this role ability. Now that we have our equipment and ability set up, we can scroll down to the properties of the ability and we can see here we can choose which key bind that uh, we want to use to be able to activate the role. Now if you go to the core API page, uh, just go to this link here, and we can go to keybinds. Now in this case, um, I want to use the left shift keybind. So that is going to be ability extra 12. So I can go on this drop down and find ability extra 12. And now when I hit shift, um, that will activate the role. And here we want to make sure that we set the correct animation for the for the role that we want to do. Uh, so if we delete this, you'll see that it automatically will pop down with a list of the available animations. Um, and we can just go ahead and type in role here, turn it down to the unarmed role animation. So now if we go to the core API documentation page. Uh, we can find actually find more information about these animations and some recommendations for the different uh, times of the phases. Um, so if you go to the API page and go to animations and sockets, and then you can scroll down, and here I've already found the unarmed roll animation. And if we look here, uh, just in the notes area, you'll see that it um, recommends a cast phase duration of 0.18 or less. So let's go back to core and if we look at the cast phase or duration, right now it's point set, set to 0.15 so should be fine. Um, and we have a cooldown of 0.5 so now that this is all set up, um, we can go ahead and try or set up the logic for equipping this to the player. Because uh, right now, if we push play, uh, obviously there is no roll happening when I hit shift. We first have to get this equipment um, on the player and equipped to them. So to do that, let's go ahead and make this a new template. Uh, right click on the equipment and go down to create template from this. And we'll just leave that name as is. And now 
uh, we just need some way of equipping this to the player. Um, and there's an easy way to do that if you go to or content and look for static equipment. You can go ahead and just drag this into the hierarchy. Now what this is, is it's just basically just a script that when the player joins, it's going to equip um, whatever template you drag in here. So if we go ahead and find this role equipment template that we just made, we can drag that into uh, this reference right there. So now when I hit play, my player will automatically have uh, this t a new instance of this template spawned and equipped to the player. So you can see now I can hit roll and my player is going forward. Now the issue that maybe you've noticed is when I move backwards and I hit roll, I roll forwards. And that's maybe not what you want. Um, also if I move sideways, it's, it's always moving forward whichever direction I'm facing at the moment. Or that my camera is facing, I should say. And in most cases, you probably want your player to be rolling in the direction that they're moving in. So that's what we're going to do next. So if we go back to our ability and check out the settings, uh, we can go ahead and just deinstance this template so that we know that we're making edits to it. So on the uh, ability, go ahead and scroll down to its properties again and we can take a look at the cast time or at the cast phase and we see that the facing mode is set to aim and that is why it is always um, moving the player towards uh, wherever the camera is facing and so we can just set this to movement and I should also mention that the roll animation is a special kind of animation because it uses what's called root motion. And root motion essentially means that it's uh, not animation that just takes place like uh, just where the player is. It's actually moving the player during the um, animation. So if I hit play, you can see that I'm not moving the player at all. It's the animation that's moving the player. And that's what root motion animation is. Anyway, back to the ability, um, we can set this facing mode to movement and for the execute we can just set this to none. So now if we update this template, and it's very important to always make sure to update your templates after making changes to them, otherwise you know those, won't be, those changes won't be reflected um, when you are in play mode. So update the template and now if I move in a direction, you can see that I start rolling, but for some reason, my player kind of almost uh, has this like glitchy movement going on, right? Um, and this goes back to what I was talking about with the root motion. Because this animation is uh, using root motion, um, it's conflicting with the the movement of the player. So you have the player controller trying to move the player, but also this root motion animation um, trying to control and move the player at the same time. So they're kind of conflicting um, in what they're doing here. So something that we can try and do to fix that is you can see these other options in the phases uh, that allow players that basically indicate whether a player is allowed to move, jump, rotate um, during that specific phase. So if we disable move and we disable jump during that phase, uh, we can go ahead and try this and see what happens. So testing this out, we can see that we're still having the same issue even though we disabled movement during that specific cast time. Um, also no, notice that when I roll in a direction and let go of the arrow key, it 
works properly. Um, the animation plays out correctly and um, it's not trying to do, it's not doing that glitch that we see when I'm holding down the arrow key and doing the, and doing the roll. So the solution that I found to actually fix this issue is to set the cast time to 0.7 seconds. So now if we go and update our template and try this again, you can see that the roll animation is a lot smoother and we're not getting that glitch movement that was kind of happening at the end of the roll. And it just looks uh, a lot cleaner and a lot smoother. So why does increasing the cast time of the ability fix this issue? Because if you remember back to the documentation, um, it recommended that we set the cast duration to 0.18. So why is that not working for us? Well, the issue has to do with the two settings of the roll ability itself and the player settings. So if you look at the player settings, um, you'll see that there is a property here called facing mode, and it says specify, uh, or yeah, it specifies what controls a player's facing direction. And in this case, it's set to face aim when active. So face aim when active says the player faces their look direction while moving. So while we're not moving, the player is not changing direction at all, but if I move, then the player is always facing wherever my camera is looking. But in the case of the roll ability, if we look at its uh, properties and settings, uh, remember that we set it, the facing mode to movement. And that means that um, the during the roll uh, cast phase, it's going to face the player towards wherever they're moving. So these two settings are conflicting, um, meaning that you know while the player is just moving normally, the player settings are like I just showed you. Um, the player is only rotating when they are rotating to where the camera is facing when they're moving. But during the roll ability. Um, the roll, or when we activate the roll ability, it takes over and says, hey, don't face to where the camera is facing, face where the movement direction, or in the direction of movement. And as soon as that roll is done, then the player settings takes over again and snaps back and says, no, look where the camera is facing. And that's why we got that kind of glitch movement that you saw before um, we fixed the issue, where it would kind of start into the roll but then um, kind of glitch out of it and snap back to facing towards the camera. So if we go back to the roll ability and go down to the properties and settings again and change the, let's ca change the cast time back to that 1.8 and update this. And so we can see that we're getting that kind of glitch movement again <laughs> that we don't want. Uh, but if we go to player settings now and scroll to where that facing mode is, and we can change this to face movement. And if we do that, you can actually see that it fixes the problem because now those two settings are aligned and are essentially telling the player to do the same thing. Uh, so we never see that kind of glitch movement or, or uh, animation issue that we were seeing before. But um, in the case that you do want uh, this you know, facing mode, this is the solution for getting that to work. Just changing this cast time to 0.7, disabling can move and can jump. So before I started making this tutorial, I thought that there was a property or setting on abilities that let you essentially disable an ability if or prevent a, a player from using an ability if they were you know not on the ground but 
apparently that does not exist. So I wanted to quickly show you guys just a simple way <clears throat> to set up a script um, that would basically give that functionality of making it so players could only use the roll while they're on the ground instead of in the air. Because um, right now if I push play you can see that I can use the roll while I'm in the air. Uh, but maybe for your game, you just want it so they can only use it while they're on the ground. So if we go ahead and de-instance our equipment template here, and right-click on this ability, and let's create a new script. We'll just call it ground roll example. So oh, now we can go ahead and open the script. And we just want to get a reference to that roll ability. And since the uh, since we've already made the script a child of the roll ability, we can just get the parent of the script, and that will give us the ability. And we want to go ahead and set up a function for the. Um, the cast event of the roll ability. So on ability cast, and that gives or passes in the ability object. And so we can just hook that, uh, hook up the cast event to that function. And so when the ability is being cast, we want to check and see whether or not the player is on the ground. And if they're not on the ground, then we essentially want to just interrupt the ability and prevent them from rolling. So we could just do a check to see if they're if they're not on the ground. So we just do not this ability dot owner, which is just the player that is the owner of the ability. And we can just do a check. We can check to see if they are grounded, or I should say that they are, uh, or if they are not grounded. So if they're not on the ground, then we want to interrupt the roll. And it's basically that easy. So just make sure to save your script, and also to update the template. And now when we preview, I can't roll while I'm in the air. But if I'm on the ground, I can roll all I want to. Well, that's basically all there is to it for making a simple rollability in Core. If there's any questions or even suggestions of future content and tutorials that you guys want to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments. Also, if you found this helpful at all, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave a thumbs up on the video, and I will see you guys next time.